I'm Connor Gorman. Um, I've worked at StackRox and now ACS uh, via the acquisition for the last five years, so quite a while. Um, I'm an engineering lead, and I'll walk you guys through uh, what we're working on. So very quickly, based on the hands raised in Kirsten's presentation, I want to just walk through quickly what ACS is, what it does, and why. Um, and so our goal is really to build the first, and we built the first uh, Kubernetes native security platform. Um, covering both build, deploy, and then runtime. And so starting with build, right, it's really around securing uh, the supply chain, um, you know, vulnerability scanning in CI pipelines, actually scanning configuration YAMLs in CI pipelines, right, giving as much feedback to developers uh, as soon as possible. Then we're looking at the deploy stage, right, where you have running containers, running pods, and running deployments. And what you're trying to do is continuously monitor them, monitor them and continuously evaluate their vulnerabilities, right? I always like to say, because images are immutable, the number of vulnerabilities you'll find only ever increases, right? There's only CVE 2022 coming out, CVE 2023, you're running images for a long time, the number of vulnerabilities only increases. And then finally, from the runtime perspective, right, what's running in your pods? Is it what you expect it to run, right? And then how can you take that runtime information and bleed it back into the way that you configure your applications to make them more secure. You know, along the way, right, we integrate with all the tools that we know and love, right, from image registries, uh, image scanners, we have our own, like Kirsten mentioned, uh, different CI CD tools to make it easy to integrate, DevOps notifications, generic webhooks, right, and then SIMs. And so it was kind of the whole breadth of integrations that we have, and our goal is to secure all of Kubernetes all of Kubernetes from the bottom up, everywhere. And so we've been pretty uh, Kubernetes distribution agnostic, including, uh, you know, obviously OpenShift, but also uh, many of the Kubernetes distributions from the large cloud providers. So from our perspective, we have four key priorities that we've already been working on and will continue to work on uh, in 2022. The first is open source. Uh, the second is security innovation, right? I don't think the Kubernetes security landscape is finished. You know, I've been working on it for five years. <laughs> There's probably another five years left in it, right? How can we uh, continue to expand this ecosystem? Um, portfolio integration, uh, now that we're part of Red Hat, right? How can we all work together and provide uh, a better solution for all of you? And then finally, uh, the ability to run a world-class uh, cloud service and managed service to allow uh, everyone to use ACS as easily as possible. So we did it. <laughs> we're open source. Uh, you know, uh, this has been quite the journey. It's been uh, a little bit over a year. As of the last two months, we've been open source. Find us at uh, StackRox, StackRox on GitHub. We're also in the CNCF Slack under the StackRox channel. Um, we, I heavily encourage everyone to jump on there. If you have questions, we've got people ready to answer them, myself included. And then also, you know, feel free to file issues, ask questions, uh, request features. Uh, we really want to build a community around this project that, you know, I've spent a lot of my a professional career working on, and I'm really excited about, you know, sharing it with you all. So touching on the first portion of open source, uh, unfortunately clicking the uh, make public reposit, you know, make repository public on GitHub is not uh, the end of open source, right? And so uh, just for some context, the StackRox name is used for the open source and upstream project and advanced cluster security or ACS, it's the downstream project. Uh, you can find it on stackrocks.io. We'll take you right to our community page. Um, as Kirsten mentioned, the combining of Claire and R scanner, which is a fork of Claire just earlier in the life cycle, right? We want to contribute a lot of that code upstream. Uh, we've made a lot of changes over the years. Also, we have relied on some uh, Falco Sysdig libraries, and so we want to contribute back to that community now that we're open source as well. Um, we had our own open source project called Kubelinter, which helps you lint YAMLs um, from Helm or Kubernetes YAMLs in CI CD pipelines. Um, and we want to extend that and continue to invest in that area. And then finally, overall, invest in the community around our project. Um, I'm pretty new to open source, I'll be honest. And so um, I want to continue to enable the community to contribute to our project. And any ideas and suggestions you guys have are very welcome. Cool. From a security innovation side, right, there's pretty much an infinite amount of things to do, <laughs> I'll be honest. But, so we had to, had to pare them down to kind of uh, four key categories. One is within vulnerability management, which is uh, always a hot topic. 
and with uh, software uh, supply chain security even in a hotter topic. And so we really always want to focus on things that are actionable. And so this first topic here around identifying unused software packages is really around uh, helping you prioritize vulnerabilities that you may have in your images and ensuring that um, you can like, mitigate them in any way possible. So uh, a lot of times there's different packages and base images that may have vulnerabilities, but you never use them or never load them or they're never used in your application. Um, at StackRocks, a lot of times we have static Go binaries. The only, only thing that's supposed to run that container is a static Go binary. Right? And so vulnerabilities in other packages that may exist due to a base image, for example, uh, may not be relevant to us. So we want to make sure that we give you actual in actionable information uh, along those lines. I think Kirsten really mentioned uh, validating image signatures. Uh, we have the ability within our product now as a part of an admission controller to gate whether or not images uh, enter your environment based on whether or not they're signed correctly, based on the signatures that you know. And so uh, we're continuing to expand that functionality as well. And then from a bottoms up approach, right, we want to provide better host level vulnerability scanning. Uh, Kubernetes and the entire ecosystem is really about from the node up, so nodes and pods, and then also uh, the security of uh, Kubernetes itself in terms of vulnerabilities that may exist. And so you want to really want to branch that entire lifecycle. And the next step for us is really around uh, host level vulnerability scanning. And then finally, I want to make vulnerability scanning easy for everyone, right? So as a developer, my ideal flow is that I build an image locally, I scan it uh, locally, make sure it looks good, push it to CI, it gets scanned there again, right? Deploy it to production, it gets scanned there again, right? And then we're continuously scanning it. So vulnerability scanning is not a one-time thing, it's a continuous process. And so from my perspective, I want to do that locally. From a policy management perspective, uh, we run policies against all of your deployments and configurations. Uh, we want to help you bulk them together. So how can you move them between different instances of StackRocks? You may have air-gapped environments. How can you group them logically? And then finally, excuse me, how do you take your gatekeeper policies and integrate them uh, with StackRocks from the open source side? Good, take a second there. Lots of talking. From the network policy perspective, I know that uh, Kirsten also talked about these briefly. Um, it's really about how can we help people leverage network policies. I think the adoption of network policies has been a little low. I know that uh, a lot of these features, four years ago, I was trying to build a network policy, and I thought, man, this is really hard. <laughs> like, I can't figure out how to do this. Um, how can we make this easier for people, right? And so the now the next changes that we're trying to make from this regard are around how do you identify applications that don't have network policies apply to them? Uh, I think we all know and use Kubernetes labels, not the easiest things to use, easy to get wrong, right? How can you identify things that uh, are, are not being uh, properly attributed in, via labels? The next two are really around usability with respect to UI and UX and getting you out of the YAML stage and into actually using a UI. So the first place I like to start is I'm building a network policy is how do I have this namespace of tenant A not talk to namespace of tenant B? How can we help customers provide, or how can we help customers do this and then quickly segment them? And then finally, security metrics and trending. How do you know that your security program is working, right? How can you look at things over time and ensure that the number of policies that are being violated or the number of vulnerabilities are being reduced? Awesome. So as I mentioned earlier, right, it's really about integrating with overall Red Hat portfolio post acquisition. Right? The first one is really around usability. How can we make sure that we can scan OpenShift local registries? Our entire architecture is based on a control plane, and then you have secured clusters. Uh, we have some customers that have over 300 secured clusters. right? And if you have any registries that are local to those clusters, right, we need to be able to scan them and also pull the images out of those and upload them to uh, our centralized control plane where you get a single pane of glass to look at all of them. Uh, along the same lines, right, is within scanner and ACS and ACM. This is really, in my opinion, a better together story, right? We've all built a bunch of amazing features, but how can we provide those features in a very unified way? 
and also a way that um, is visible to you right through your OpenShift console. Right? So how, really, how can we unify all of the amazing technology that we've built to provide them in a super unified uh, and straightforward manner? And then finally, via Submariner, how do we build uh, security for cross-cluster networking? Currently, we are confined to a single cluster. So this is the overarching uh, goal and something that I'm very passionate about and worked really hard on so far, is really how do we provide all the things I just talked to you about in a way that's uh, easy for you to operationalize. And this is where ACS as a managed service comes in, and ACS as a service. And so our goal is to take the control plane, manage it fully for you, and all you have to do is uh, secure stateless clusters. So the goal is really to get people up and running as fast as possible. Um, again, we're going to be um, mostly Kubernetes distribution agnostic. You can run this in uh, different cloud providers. You can run this on OpenShift. You can run it in managed OpenShift. Right? It'll be fully managed by Red Hat with an SLA. And then finally, uh, the end goal here is to provide flexible consumption models. And that's all I have for you. Thanks, guys.